so, so let's now move on to Mariam Heli Lucas, sociologist from Algeria, and she'll be speaking on communities, conflicting rights, and hierarchy, hierarchy of rights in non-secular states. So fire away, Mariam. Um, I want to point at a very paradoxical situation. On the one hand, we have, and we pointed at it the whole day, left and human rights organizations supporting the rights of communities and sadly not the rights of citizens as the best strategy to fight racism, discrimination, exclusion, etc. and as a strategy to defend the right to be different. And we have seen again and again during the day that fundamentalists use this to promote their political agenda. Meanwhile, in many of our countries, people are on the street, whether it's in Algeria, in Tunisia, in Egypt, and many other places, fighting for secular laws and not claiming to be different <laughs> at all. And we have in Europe, everywhere in Europe, women of migrant Muslim descent, which I don't want who, to call Muslim women, uh, doing the same thing, I mean, saying this is not what we want. We want secular states. So my question to you is, are we crazy? Are we not, are we so underdeveloped that we don't know what is good for us? Or is it an incredible arrogance from people here telling us what we should think about fundamentalism? I just want to discuss briefly this question of difference. Historically, we know that difference has been used again and again by far-right movements. Whether it's apartheid in the South Africa, whether it's racist southern states in the U USA, whether it's Nazism against the Jews. And recently I heard a man from Algeria who was a worker, and he forged a very interesting concept on the basis of under house arrest. He said, I'm under culture arrest. That thing is brilliant, and I used it as the title of one of my articles referring to him. We are essentializing culture and religion. And to me, it's very similar whether fundamentalists say, oh, Islam is a wonderful religion, and it's peace and love, and the racists say, Islam is barbaric. In both cases, we are essentializing Islam. We don't look into the fact that it's people and how they enact what they believe in that are important. So the question we should ask again and again is who defines religion? Who defines culture? Who speaks for religion? Who speaks for culture? And usually, it's old male conservative people who are also self-appointed representative of communities. It's not young feminists or old feminists for that matter. Um, so the governments everywhere in Europe are more and more calling on so-called religious leaders through a very undemocratic process, because these people are not elected by anybody to solve political and sociological problems and uh, to bring so-called religious solutions to social conflicts. And we should not let this happen. We should point at the undemocratic process that is at stake here. Moreover, it presumes that cultures and religions are homogeneous and we very well know that Within each culture, there are antagonistic and conflicting groups. To start with, class and gender, with different interests. So who is speaking for which interest is the question we should raise permanently. Now, we are at the stage when um, we see different legal rights being granted to different categories of citizens, if I may still call them citizens. And all this is done in the name of rights, of human rights of the communities, which is totally a paradox in my views. 
So are we going to reach the point when, let's say, in Britain, Catholic women will, will be legally prevented to use contraceptive? Is that what we are aiming at? Or Muslim women will be prevented to have equal right to inheritance? It's grotesque. And we have to question these categories, Muslims, Catholic, or whatever. Two minutes? I thought we had 10 minutes. No, no, two left. Hmm? Sorry. Two minutes left. How come? I started at 30 on my watch. So I'm no, no. <laughs> anyway, so um, then I'll skip a number of things. But I certainly want to raise the question, who is going to put us into these categories? And how does one get out of these categories we are forced into? Are we put in the slots? on the basis of geographical origin, on the basis of Arabic sounding name. Faith is not something that is brought from outside. It's something you believe in. I want to point at something which has been really terrible with human rights organizations. In this hierarchy of rights that they have instituted, and with community rights first, or minority rights, religious rights, and cultural rights, it's women's rights coming last. But who cares? It's only women's rights. The state doesn't care and want social peace and would happily trade our rights for peace between so-called communities. But there is also a hierarchy of victims. With the exclusive focus on state accountability, in countries like Algeria, for instance, non-state actors, the fundamentalist armed groups, have been sort of whitewashed from their, um, vi the violations they committed against the population. Moreover, we were not, as victims of non-state actors, Benefic beneficiaries of the help from human rights organizations. For instance, it's only fundamentalists who were victims of the state, persecuted by the state, who were entitled to asylum in Europe. Those who were hunted by the very same fundamentalists were not supported, were not entitled according to human rights organizations to asylum in Europe. These are unacceptable hierarchy of rights and hierarchy of victims. My response when people say, but you know these people are oppressed either by an undemocratic state or by racism in uh, Europe, which I'm not denying. My response is, to a situation of oppression, there's not only one single response, we could have a revolutionary response. What we get is the far right response. It should not be seen as legitimate and it should not be supported. Thanks very much, Mariam. Thanks for wrapping up so quickly.